<coughs> Late in the evening of October 18, 1988, police officer Michael Bush was shot and killed as he and his partner <coughs> tried to stop two men in the vicinity of Broadway and 161st Street in Manhattan. Unbeknownst to the officers, these two men were fleeing from a robbery. On January 12, 1989, a, a grand jury commenced an investigation into Officer Bush's death, at the outset of which the assistant district attorney asked the grand jurors to vote to extend their term for at least an additional four months. After hearing from 25 witnesses and receiving over 30 exhibits into evidence which focused on the guilt of the defendant and Daniel Meyer, both of whom had fled to the Dominican Republic immediately after the crimes, the prosecutor on March 30th, 1989, asked the grand jury to consider, as to Meyer only, charges of murder in the first degree attempted murder in the first degree, two counts of murder in the second degree, intentional and felony murder, and robbery in the first degree. The panel voted a true bill. The investigation continued, however, with the grand jurors repeatedly agreeing to extend their term but hearing little evidence. In fact, the grand jury heard only from Florence Almont, the defendant's ex-wife on November 17, 1989. On December 13, 1989, the jurors were asked one last time to extend their term for an additional three months to hear from one final witness, and although they agreed to do so, that witness, whose identity has never been disclosed, was not called, and the grand jury never met again. It appears that the proceeding lapsed because of the paucity of evidentiary proof. On October 22, 1998, the people presented the plenary case against the defendant to a second grand jury without seeking court permission. Eleven witnesses testified at this proceeding, eight of whom had testified at the 1989 proceeding. A ninth witness, a police detective, gave testimony comparable to that offered by a different police witness in 1989. The remaining evidence at the second presentation had been unavailable to the people in 1989. The grand jury indicted the defendant for a single count of murder in the second degree, Penal Law, Section 125. Upon the extradition from the Dominican Republic in March of, 19, of 2001, and his arraignment on the indictment, the defendant filed an omnibus motion seeking repetitive relief, including summary dismissal of the charges on the grounds that there were procedural improprieties in the grand jury presentation, that he was improperly extradited, and that the delayed prosecutorial thrust deprived him of due process. The people filed a response to which the defense admitted a, uh, submitted a reply. An oral argument on the motion was heard on October 3, 2001. Additionally, on November 15, 2002, the court permitted the people to notice uh, on notice to the defendant to make an ex parte in-camera showing with respect to circumstantial evidence surrounding the pre-indictment delay and the interrelated necessity for a protective order regarding certain potential Brady material. Thereafter, concerned that the people had acted without statutory authority when they presented the case against the defendant to the 1998 grand jury without court authorization, this court directed the parties to submit obligatory memoranda on this issue as well.
the defendant now contends that the 1998 grand jury presentation violated the dictates of the criminal procedure law. That was hard.